Scott Shannon. I had an injury like that and for about four or five innings uh, the, it felt OK but it gradually puffs up and puffs up and you can't grip the baseball you have to come out of the game. Is it you saying you reach for a baseball a hit back through the middle. Or? No, mine was sliding into base. Oh. I think in Clemens case you know the way he follows through his glove is always behind him. His glove is behind him and his pitching arm is out front and he never really gets his glove out there to uh, to use for protection. I got a feeling somebody's going to something's going to come up and into somebody just move them off the plate. That wouldn't surprise yeah. me because uh, everything has been hit back through the middle. I'm sure his first concern is to make sure his hand is OK and he can grip his pitches. And it wouldn't surprise me as he uh, if he gets through this inning without any damage that uh, you might see some Yankee hitters moved off the plate Just say uh, enough of that going in and hitting it through the middle will <laughs> make you a little uncomfortable. So the Yankees saying well if you can't knock this guy out one way then uh, maybe enough balls to the box if he tries to bare him. Yeah, but you know he doesn't want to give up a two nothing lead this no. way, not this way. You can stay out there and pitch with a lot of pain, but if you got a broken wrist or you can't grip the baseball, you're defenseless. Outside corner, no effects of getting hit in the wrist on that one. A quick strike to Jeter. Clemens is using a mouthpiece and what happens with a lot of athletes when you're in competition boy you tend to grit your teeth and grind your teeth and tense up your jaw and those are designed to help you be a little more relaxed there. One and two. Well this would be the this would be the spot that he might do it in Kenny if you're thinking that Clemens. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing but. Maybe because it's happened to me before. Yeah. <laughs> Might try to just uh, buzz the tower here and keep the Yankee hitters honest. Nope. This blew it right by Jeter and flexing his hand as he goes to the dugout. He appears to be okay. He shut out the Yankees on two hits through three. Al Troutweg will join me here in the top of the fourth. One more look at the Yankees' first hit. College football is back on MSG. Catch another season of gridiron matchups from conferences all across the country. Miami invades Cincinnati, Saturday on MSG. This month, another 18 million people will go online. E-mail already outnumbers regular mail. By nearly 10 to 1. By the end of the year, the internet will carry more information than all the telephones in America. Soon. All our ideas will be free of borders. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Virtually all internet traffic travels across the systems of one company, Cisco Systems, empowering the internet generation. Are you ready? If you've been injured in an auto accident, a hospital, construction site, or just walking down the street, turn to the aggressive, experienced attorneys at Perlman, Apat, and Futterman. Our personal injury attorneys are experts at taking on the insurance companies and getting you the compensation you deserve. The insurance companies have lawyers on their side. Tilt the scales in your favor with the law firm of Perlman, Apat, and Futterman. If you or a loved one has been injured, call Perlman, Apat, and Futterman at 718 268 2020. What are you guys doing over here? Wake up, New York. It's Time Warner Cable's Time to Win. Aloha. On September 8th at 7.20 in the morning, we're celebrating our first anniversary by giving away a free trip around the world. History on the Oh. Ah. You're already entered to win just for being a Time Warner Cable customer. London, China, Japan, Hawaii. Oh, come on. Listen for your name. You could be going around the world. My wife and I would pack our bags and say sayonara. Welcome back to the stadium. Blue Jays lead at 2 nothing. Al joins me now in the fourth inning. We talked on the scorecard show about the Yankee playoff pitching picture. Robles looked pretty good through wow. the first three. I think he's looked sensational except for that one pitch to Tony Fernandez. 
That's been the difference so far. 2 0 Yankees as Fernandez's home run of the second inning gives to the Toronto Blue Jays the lead. You really have to wonder. I mean, I do, as a fan who's never pitched. How does this happen? How does he go through what he went through for four starts and come out with stuff like that? Boy, pitching coaches would be, and psychologists, whoever you could find, it'd be worth a lot. I mean, it's so precise. That's why you appreciate what Clemens is doing. The release point and to be consistent pitch after pitch is so precise. And you see a Rabu who looks like a Cy Young winner one inning and then just get a little off track. For the captain of the Blue Jays, Delgado, and he's got a big bat and slugs it out of here, right out of the exit. A second home run for the Blue Jays, a 31st home run on the season for Delgado, and a 3 0 lead for Toronto. It was a laser beam. Joe Torre said today he had a meeting with Hideki Arabu a couple of days ago to tell him you're going to start every start that you're supposed to have for the rest of the season just relax. He thought if there was one thing that maybe Arabu was doing wrong was squeezing the ball too hard. Well, let's see what he did with this one looked like Delgado went outside I mean, he's got great plate coverage that ball was on the outside part of the plate and he just hooked it. Looked like it had good velocity but Delgado goes out of here and right. You know, Arabu could close out the Blue Jays right here, and you'd say he had a pretty good outing. But as far as having a chance to win the ball game, you don't know it the way Roger Clemens is throwing. Jose Cruz. And it's one ball and two strikes. Well, if he could do what Andy Pettit did yesterday, Andy struggled through the first few, and then when the Yankees did score some runs, he got himself on track and finished with four solid innings and picked up the win, even though he gave up five runs. But it's innings like this of inconsistency that put doubt in the mind of uh, Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre, I'm sure, as to is this a guy you want starting game four really? in the playoffs? And that's what they want to see a little more consistency with the control. Well, you see, in this at bat, he's all over the zone, so he's gone full at three and two. His motion is conducive to these kinds of things. Why I mean, is that? Well, if you compare it to Clemens. His motion is kind of clean. There's not a lot of head movement with Herdecki. Watch the leg swing, extra leg kick. So it's like a golf swing that has a lot going on. It's yeah. very difficult for you to get to the same spot every time. I think it is. I mean, if you were going to teach a young pitcher, you wouldn't teach him to swing your leg like that. That always promotes inconsistent control. Another look at Delgado. He knew it was gone. You'd rather have the, the pitcher just bring his leg straight up like he's going to hit himself in the stomach but see you start swinging it he kind of like a chorus girl kick kicks it behind him and I think he tends to like swing around his body and then sometimes he'll be on top the release point is just not consistent pitch to pitch Tony Fernandez looks at ball one it is Fernandez's home run and Delgado's home run it's been the difference in the game. Toronto trying to keep some belief alive that they can catch Boston and ignore Texas in the wild card race. No problem on the uh, throw over for Jose Cruz Jr. Fans sort of quieted here. They were really roaring when this game got started, and Arabu and Roger Clemens put up K after K after K. Fly ball left side. Broch is giving chase. And right on the edge, almost going into the crowd, is Ricky Lede, but he misses it. I wonder if he hurt his leg there leaning up against the wall. Nice effort by Ricky Lede and well timed. He knows exactly where it is. He bumps his thigh against the rib, but he leans in and he's uh, inches away from catching that ball. to watch. He's got the kind of speed you'd like to have in Yankee Stadium for a left fielder. He's got center fielder speed because there's so much territory to cover out there. One and one to Tony Fernandez. Arabu 
blows a fastball right by him. Fernandez's move across the diamond is seen as one of the things that allowed the Blue Jays to regain their their step. Jose Cruz Jr. put in center field. They take the glove away from Jose Canseco. Here's Fernandez to center field. Bernie Sachet's back. And one away here in the top of the fourth inning. Yankees baseball on MSG is being brought to you in part by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. Now it's the catcher Darren Fletcher to face Hideki Arabu. Sashay, as you've been you've been browsing that web, picking up these new words. I'm guilty. <laughs> I, I, I am guilty. That web's a busy place today. Bill Webb too. Bill's busy. Yeah. Yep. See those last two years saying, how can this happen? The last two pitches right over the top. You know, good pop on that fastball. Fletcher was late on it. And I'm sure with all the video available these days, they might be able to tell what's the difference. Is it just a matter of inches in the release point? Some way that Mel Stottlemyre could communicate him after to him after looking at all the video what he has to do to stay consistent. There's something I'd like to point out and get your opinion on. You know Yankee Stadium the most historic place in sports. You'd think that one of the things that they would want to have here at Yankee Stadium because it's been part of baseball forever is an on deck circle <laughs> instead of an on deck square. Yeah I you know I don't understand. High fly Bernie coming on Knobloch going out Jeter's in the neighborhood but it's Bernie's ball. I mean I don't understand how Yankee Stadium can't have an on deck circle that is an on deck square and I, frankly I think Dan Cunningham has, has lost his marbles a little bit here. You think so. Yeah. Well I, I think with the, with the rubberized on deck circles they used to throw out there but what they're trying to do right now is make that grass look nice and green and lush around the dugouts and that's where the hitters tend to to hang anyway so ready for this. Yeah. There's a method to Dan's madness that is the same clay in the batter's box. Ah, and it's Dan's way of giving the hitters the exact same feel that they're going to have in the batter's box in the on deck circle for both teams for both teams on both sides. Now that's fair because years ago the Yankees were known I mean way back in the 60s they had mounds in their bullpen but the visitors were flat <laughs> right. they wanted that little inside edge. Now he's a fair guy. That's good. There you go. So you know the stadium I still think should have an on deck circle. Yeah but that's very very. Smartly installed on deck square. So now we have to shorten it. instead of saying Jeter is in the on deck circle, Jeter is on deck. Right. And should be in a circle. <laughs> 1 0 puts the gray back. And it's one ball and one strike. Arabu has really slowed his pace here. Does that affect him also? Does that? Well, I think so. I've pointed out the top of the game. If you see the the good pitchers the great pitchers like Clemens the pace not only between pitches but the pace of his motion has almost a cadence to it there's no hesitation there's no indecision there's a rhythm to it the runner going on the pitch the throw from Girardi is dropped for a moment by Knobloch and a stolen base for Jose Cruz Jr. So the Blue Jays put a runner in scoring position. Girardi's throw is pretty yeah. much on target. Nice effort by Joe. Comes out of the blocks. And you see Knobloch catches that ball just a little ahead of the bag. Catchers, if they had their wishes, would have a meeting with middle infielders and say, would you please hey. just stay on the bag and straddle it? I think he has a point here. I think yeah. he was out. But I think he, did he juggle the ball? No, I no. guess he did. I, originally, I thought he juggled the ball. Then on the replay, I saw that he didn't. And I think for a moment, he had the glove on Cruz Jr. when he was off the bag. Now Rabu bounces one. So Knobloch protested for a moment and, and I think he had a point. Yankees got a call like that in Boston when Garcia Parra overslid second base and the infielders will do that now they will stay with the runner to make sure 
He stays on the bag. Two outs in a very long top of the fourth inning. Three and two. Now the Yankee fans get behind Hideki Arabu to get out of this inning. That inconsistent control again from Arabu. Second walk in the inning. Coming after the home run. And now there are two on with two away for Alex Gonzalez. Another look at this stolen base by Jose Cruz Jr. It is the 167th by the Blue Jays. That's tops in the major. See where Knobloch is ahead of the bag. If you're straddling the bag, that throw will come right into your glove, and oftentimes. Right. The runner will slide right into it, but that's what Al's talking about. As his hand came off the bag, Knobloch felt that he tagged him, and he did. Base hit through the left side. Lede charges. They're going to send the runner. Here's Lede's throw. Girardi jumps, tags. Out! Jose Cruz Jr. thrown out with a throw from Ricky Lede and a big leap from Joe Girardi. Tim Johnson on the scene to discuss it with Mike Riley. We mentioned he's a fun player to watch. He tested Girardi's basketball leap. I think he may have gotten a hand in. We'll look again in a moment. from Gillette, the first triple blade shaving system. Three blades specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. So you don't have to shave the same area over and over, which means less irritation. Three blades, fewer strokes, less irritation. Mach 3 from Gillette. is back and it's bigger than ever. Win $100,000 instantly in the Daily News Instant Win Game. With eight chances to win, it's like getting eight lottery tickets free. So if you got the itch, get scratching because it could make you rich. Get the bigger, better scratch and match game free in the Sunday Daily News. Back live in the Bronx, Ricky Lede is talking to Jorge Posada about how he set himself up for the throw and how the ball took off. Here it is, Gonzalez at the plate, two on with two outs. Yeah, and Lede, he, he's trying to get on top of that ball. That's what he was saying to Posada. And actually, the Yankees got by with a break there, I think. Mike Riley, it happened so fast, he gave the out call. But I think Cruz actually had his hand in before Girardi tagged him. Paul O'Neill against Roger Clemens. He has given up two hits and so far in the game struck out six Yankees. And he jumps in front of O'Neill. Just off the plate with another heater. I said to Paul before the game, I said, Paul, you know, I was really glad Channel 11 did the game last night because I would have had to ask you to come on the post game and then you'd fight me because you don't want to come on and talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had another mess. Line drive, base hit center field. 
Paul O'Neill on, and the Yankees have the leadoff man on. Well, he is human, Al, and he's a little vulnerable because suddenly, as you see Fletcher's target, he's going to want the ball on the outside corner. And again, for about the fourth time in the last two innings, Clemens misses the target and leaves it over the middle where O'Neill takes advantage of it. So O'Neill said to me, what are you talking about? I had my script already. The bullpen did great. <laughs> uh, so now it's Bernie Williams. Bernie, one of Rogers' strikeout victims, hitting 339. And quite a fun duel it's going to be with Bernie and Derek Jeter. Swings on the first pitch. It'll make the seats. Yeah, O'Neill is one of the Yankee players, Al, that if it were not for Toronto and Boston being in the wild card race, Joe Torre could give guys like O'Neill some time off. I think we'll start seeing that happen middle of next week. These, these kind of games now for O'Neill are like spring training. They'd like to win, but they got the East wrapped up, and most of the veterans have their eyes on October. I'll tell you, though, talking to Joe Torre today, it sounded like Joe really wants that Yankee win record. Not that he's going to go nuts to get it, no. but it sounds like he really would like to oh, have he'd it. He'd like to have it, but not at, at the expense of wearing down his regulars. Line drive, base hit, left field. Not that it's affecting his pitching, but remember, Clemens took a hot shot off his pitching hand last inning. And maybe he didn't feel something right away, but maybe he's feeling something now. Well, again, let's see. Did he miss the target? Yeah, he left it up over the middle of the plate. Yeah, maybe the splitter isn't as sharp. No disrespect for the Yankee hitters. They're good hitters, but it's obvious that Clemens is not what he was in the first few innings. And we've used the expression before, control within the strike zone. He's not walking anyone, but he's not throwing the strikes where he wants to. Tino Martinez, only two for his last 14. A walk his first time up. 113 RBIs, 25 home runs, hitting 288. Clemens is high and away. It's a weird game, you know, and Toronto traded away all those players a month ago. Roger must have said, man, that contract's not really looking too great right now if I'm interested in winning, and now here they are playing their best baseball. Hot shot fly ball to the upper deck. It's one ball and one strike. Best winning percentage in the American League since the 31st of July. That's when they traded away Ed Sprague, not to point the finger at him, but they're a better team in the field and a little more active on the base. Yankees in it with big time with two on and nobody out. Fans responding. Two balls and a strike. Joe Torre said earlier this year you felt they'd be playing better than they were playing of Toronto. Then they trade their closer started winning all those games. Sometimes this is a tough game to figure out. And so now Torre is managing against the team that is desperate to win games. The 2 1 off the plate 3 and 1. On deck is Jorge Posada. Posada on deck is the DH. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> I did. That As Martinez great. swings through, Jorge Posada was on his way up to the plate. He thought that was strike three. All the base runners now looking at their coaches because do you run three, two, nobody out on Clemens? I don't think so. Just got a little nibble straight back. You get a couple of base runners against him. You don't want to run yourself into a strikeout throw him out inning. So both O'Neill and Bernie Williams are staying put with three two nobody out. He's the D.H. tonight. Darrell was disappointed. He didn't get a chance to face Roger Clemens. But that's the Tory plan. Shirley Davis not feeling real good from the left side. Got the face of a 1986 didn't he. Back in the Fall classic. Noise level back up for Tino Martinez. 
Line drive. Right field headed toward the corner. O'Neill gets a green light from Randolph. And a red light for Bernie. A run scoring double for Tino Martinez. His 114th RBI. Nobody out. No indication from Clements as to whether that wrist is bothering him. And again, Yankees got good hitters. Is it the Yankee hitters or is it Clements that is not quite what he was before taking the line drive? Green plays it well out of the corner. And a 3 2 fastball that again he left in the hitting zone. He is not making pitchers' pitches in the strike zone. This is only the sixth time that Jorge Posada has ever faced Roger Clemens. Here's Clemens as he watched that hit go to the corner. Pretty unfazed. Did look at yeah, his hand though. Did check it out. Two balls and no strikes. I, I can't help but not make excuses for Roger Clemens. I can't help but think though that it is affecting because suddenly his control which was just pinpoint. He's he's missing if you just watch Fletcher's glove he's missing by quite a quite a ways and that well could be his inability to grip the ball comfortably. Strike one to Jorge Posada. Bernie Williams single Tino Martinez's double gets the Yankees on the board. It's a two run game 3 1 Toronto. And now let's see what Clemens has and what he can do when he's got to have a strike. Tim Johnson getting a little restless. The first great play. Carlos Delgado, but the Yankees get a second run. Boy, that ball was hit hard. But the thing that Clemens did was he put the ball over the plate. Looked like he had pretty good stuff on it. Nice at bat by Posada. I mean, the Yankees get just what they want. Jorge would prefer to line drive single, but a nice pick by Delgado. It scores Bernie Williams. And it also advances Tino Martinez to third base with one out. So it's a doubly productive out, and it forces the Blue Jays to bring the infield in here. Try to keep the tying run from scoring. Ricky Lede with one out, two in in the bottom of the fourth. With they hitting 270. Remember, he was part of the Yankees in the early season when Bernie went down with an injury. Let's go back to last inning. Lede is in left field, first and second, two out. Here comes Lede. The catcher is Girardi. The throw is going to be high. Girardi leaps. Now watch. Or maybe Mike Riley did see it right. Maybe the tag was on Cruz just before he touched the plate. He had the best view of it. Didn't yeah, he? he was right there. But that's why Stewart reacted so vehemently that he thought Cruz had his hand in before the tag. One thing we learned on that play, Lede's got plenty of pop in that arm of his. He can really fire it. The count is one and one. Lede wants one. Back and right. And at the wall, it's pulled down by Green. John Green was right there, but it's an RBI for Ricky Lede, and Yankee fans know their stuff. They give him a big round of applause. Martinez scores, and it's 3 3. I thought that was out. Well, Ricky Lede about five feet from a hefty phone bill after tonight's game. Can you imagine <laughs> if this went out of the ballpark and he got on the phone to tell everybody, I took the rocket deep? And gave us the lead, but Sean Green right there at about 6-4, reaching up to make the grab. Grosius takes yep. one in the back. A 
thought he had a word or two for Clemens. Curtis certainly does. No question there was a little intent right there as Brocious uh, took the ball up the middle and has had a little success against Clemens this year. You see everyone on that Yankee bench reacting. And Joe Torre's going to say, hey, wait a minute. What yeah. happened to the after home run sort of theory? Right. Now, that ball didn't go out, but. Yeah, earlier this year we had an incident where Mike Stanton was ejected in the uh, umpire's call. Had said anytime there's a home run hit and a pitcher does that the next time he's going out. Now there wasn't a home run hit, but clearly that ball was thrown with intent to hit Scott Brocious. Brocious with some words for Clements. And you know, any ball thrown by Roger Clements in the spine has got a really sting. And now Torrey's getting heated. And I, I gotta tell you, I don't blame him. Because it all goes back to what happened to the Yankees in the Orioles series. This is as mad as we've seen Joe Torre, and now he's been ejected. Don't you think Mike Riley was in a position where he could have worn Clemens? Oh, no question. This is the same crew that was in Baltimore. Hirschbeck was behind the plate, and that's why Torre is upset. He ejected Mike Stanton, and he got suspended for a while. But because of who Clemens is, Nothing was done, and that's Joe Torrey's argument. That's not right. And the only way to answer this is get rid of the DH. You get rid of the DH, you allow the pitcher to hit, and then he has to take his medicine, no matter if you're a future Hall of Famer like Roger Clemens or anyone else. The bases were empty. The situation is so obvious. Now that will be interesting to see. What Hideki Arabu does when the Blue Jays come to the plate, they're going to have the top of their order leading off. Torrey's first ejection of 1998. The hitter is Joe Girardi. Line drive, base hit left field. Nice response by Girardi. And wouldn't it be something if Brocious scores a run that turns out to be decisive in the ball game? Aggressive Joe Girardi usually swings early in the count and again Clemens just Not making the pitches that he wants to and the Yankees making nice adjustments proving he is human after all Of all the Yankees coming into tonight the one who had the best batting average and who had seen Roger Clemens the most is at the plate Chuck Knobloch Fastball for strike one now the one thing right now whether it does any good or not is that Clemens wasn't officially warned but I don't think Riley's going to let him get by with any more pitches inside so I think you can get a little more comfortable in that batter's box not worry about getting pushed off the plate. Low one ball and one strike so our MSG audience is going to increase by one Joe Torrey back in I would assume the manager's office and and watching the proceedings. Now blocked to second base. And that'll be it. Clemens will pitch out of trouble, but he really got a break because for plunking Scott Roaches, he deserved to be warned. The Yankees tie up this ball game. 3-3. Three, three. After that long Lede fly ball. What do you think for a pitcher who's got one of the best controlled arms in the game? That's what Joe Torrey thought. And now he's watching along with you. Back on MSG through four. It's coming. And this time there's something new. Now there's a wind tunnel by Hoover that's self-propelled. So it almost works by itself. Tests show wind tunnel picks up more dirt than any other clean air upright. Uber, nobody. And now you can get one that's self-propelled. Like self-propelled wind tunnel. No matter how high the thermometer climbs or how sticky the humidity gets, nothing will be hotter this summer than the deals you'll get during Jeep summer days. Like a zero down 279 a month Cherokee lease with only 774 due at signing. With all this, including air conditioning at no extra charge. Or get a great price on Jeep Wrangler. 
but you'd better hurry in because deals this incredibly hot are bound to cool down fast. Check out this 279 lease at your dealer. Hi, I'm Tom Seaver. At Chase, your company is in good company, like Gourmet Garage, a member of Tom Seaver's Business Hall of Fame. Chase, the right relationship is everything. Anymore. Yankees and Toronto Blue Jays are all tied at three. Jim Cott's gone for an inning. Ken Singleton's back for an inning. And Marv is back on Monday night, the National Finance Sports Desk with Marv Albert. On, Mon on Monday night, 11 o'clock, following Yankees baseball on MSG. Right after Shannon Stewart, and Arabu wants nothing. And you know what? This is Mike Riley's fault. Arabu is furious being held by Stanton. So far, I haven't seen anything real ugly, but there's something developing. Girardi is involved. Look at Stanton lifting up Arabu. Now the bullpens come out. Shades of Baltimore. All we needed now, you're right, is one warning. That's all it had to be. All I had to do was warn Roger Clemens, which was obvious that it should have happened, and this doesn't happen. Instead, the Yankees are in a situation two weeks removed from the postseason where someone could be hurt. They had stepped on. Hey, hey Sam. Hey. And he's telling Mike Riley it's your fault. You Absolutely. See? Yeah. And now they're getting over by the dugout steps where it got to with the Yankees and the Orioles. Well, Arabu making a statement for his team. It was the very first pitch. And now if Arabu gets ejected, this is ultimately and doubly unfair. Well, you get the feeling that that could definitely happen. Now, Clemens is talking to Chad Curtis, who was screaming at him after the last pitch. Now, Richie Garcia comes in and says, enough. He wants him to get back in the dugout because he would be the one that somebody would go after on the field. See, he's talking to somebody saying, you want a part of me. Yeah, it's Chris Chambliss. Chambliss came over and said something. And Darrell's over there, too. Now, Bill Risley. Uh -huh. And things get really ugly. And once again, Strawberry, I think, was involved. Not going to back down from anybody. And this is where people get hurt. Somebody gets stepped on. Uh, this Remember, is all these guys are wearing spikes. Cleated shoes. Lots of pushing. Lots of shoving. O'Neal with Conseco. That's Jose Cardinal. I don't know who's on the bottom of that. But somebody got knocked over. Yep, now they're bringing him up. It's one of the Blue Jays. And now it erupts again. Somebody got on their feet once again. Whoever it was on the Blue Jays that came to his feet reignited things. Strawbear being held by peacekeeper Mike Stanton. And Shannon Stewart being held by uh, what Tony, Tony Collinger. Is that Bill Risley? It was Risley who got behind Strawberry. There, there he is. He was knocked to the ground, but when he got up, he was willing to start all over again. Now, this thing's not over yet. Well, that's why they used to call him Wild Bill Risley. Arapo with assistant trainer Steve Donahue. He wants to stay in the ball game. See, the point is nobody likes to be the target of anybody. Nobody goes up there with a target painted on their back. But when Clemens hit Brocious with no recourse from the umpire to say, hey, why did you, you know, give him a warning, the Yankees' only recourse was to retaliate. It was, the door was left wide open for them to throw at somebody. Absolutely. 
Homer Bush was involved. Still not done. Right in here, there's some ugly stuff going on. It's Jack Hubbard, their first base coach, Tony Cloninger. You know, and when you think back out, think back to the last Clement start in Toronto. When Clements hit Derek Jeter, came close to several Yankees during the course of the game, won the game, pitched a heck of a ball game. But all during that game, Yankee hitters were made to feel very uncomfortable. One of the Blue Jays still wants to go, and he's being restrained by one of the trainers. That's Shannon Stewart. Stewart was the one who was hit. He got hot. Strawberry checking out his hand. Finally, both teams separate. Bill Risley now being taken. Still extremely upset. I think maybe he got cheap shotted or uh, he was the one that was on the ground beneath the pile. Right now, we didn't see, and obviously, there's a lot that's got to be sorted out here. Some, some of these players are not going to be in the remainder of this ball game. Now, Hideki's going to the mound like he should, he's going to stay in the game. Now, I don't know who's going to tell him he's out of it if he gets thrown out. Well, then it's really, really, I think, a very bad miscarriage of justice if he's the one who's ejected. I think the warning starts now. Right. I agree, with you. The I agree with yeah. you. If he gets thrown out, you're right. It, it would be a miscarriage of now, some sort of baseball justice. Now Riley is right in front of the mound where Arabo is. Now he can't. What's he going to tell him? He's going to tell him he's out of game. He uh, wouldn't understand it. Well, he'll understand that wave of the arm. Did you see Paul O'Neill just turn to Arabo and shake his head as his way to go? Now all the umpires are gathering along the first baseline, no doubt going through what to do. Yeah, one thing to remember, you're talking about guys, the possibility of getting hurt. Of course, this is going to change the situation as far as the Yankees got the division wrapped up. Now look at all the Blue Jays still on the field. The Yankees have totally gone to the dugout. The umpires are, from what I can tell, letting them stay there on the field. Right now, the umpire is discussing as to what's going to be the outcome of all of this. Now, they're going to come over and talk to Tim Johnson. That's Richie Garcia, the crew chief. He's saying somebody's out. It looks like he said three guys are out. He counted off three names. Now he's going to go over to the Yankees and Chris Chambliss, who is now managing the ball club for the remainder of this game, and he's going to tell them who's in, who's out. I thought he said, you see Chris taking out the pen, he's going to throw some names off. He looks a little stunned, actually. I wonder who, who has to be the guy who stands in charge of this, stands off to the side and watches everybody go through all this, these gyrations to decide who yeah. stays. Yeah. That's a tough one. I mean, because when there's so much happening, you know, it's a blur. Now, the, the thing for the Yankees here is if Urabu stays in this game, and I believe he should stay in the game because there was no warning to this point. O'Reilly talking to Tino, Girardi, it's Garcia with Chambliss. Finally, the Blue Jays, for the most part, are back in the dugout. Again, it was Shannon Stewart who got hit by Hideki Urabu, first pitch of this fifth inning. It looks as though Urabu's going to stay in the game. I'll tell you what, he fired off that mound, didn't he? Oh, he wasn't taking anything. Well, I, I don't know if Stewart said something that he understood. But Hideki came firing off of that mound as if he meant to do some other business than hitting him in the back. Now, Tim Johnson, this is Chambliss on the first base side. Tim Johnson is on the third base side going over it with Mike Riley. And I think he wants to rob you out of the game. He's pleading his case. Yeah. The Yankees got the raw end of the deal in the Baltimore fight, in my opinion. Plus, they lost Tino Martinez, and you could argue they lost Tino for about a month because he wasn't right. I think Strawberry might be out. Homer uh, going to have to get a new jersey. He Look might Robert, be out he, of it. He can't believe it. What did I do? And Joe Torre's got to be sitting back in the clubhouse saying, 
This was so easy to prevent. Up to now Johnson. Johnson's been ejected. Yep. So he must think he got the bad end of the deal somehow. I think he wants to rob him out of the game. That's what he wants. Well, Arabu's being allowed to continue to warm up, so it looks as though he has survived. You know, one point here, from an umpire standpoint, after one guy's been hit so blatantly, you give the other team their chance to retaliate and get it over with just like this. From this point on, probably nobody will be hit unless it really turns ugly. See, you don't give the Yankees a chance to retaliate, and it's almost as if they left the door open for a reason. Exactly. Because you got to figure maybe tomorrow somebody would get it. Well, security has been ringing the field. Wow. And obviously, there's a, a great deal of lingering tension. Here it is, first pitch of the fifth. You know, if I'm hitting, I got to expect it. Ooh, right in the elbow. All right, now watch your Rob will come front. Hey! What's he saying? I don't know, but it was <laughs> it was angry. Look at him. That's Mike Stanton. Mike Stanton rescued two of his teammates. Hideki and Mel Stoudemire trying to hold Hideki back. And Don Zimmer was involved with Mike Riley after that. Now they're trying to get their pitcher into a, a safe haven. We are still awaiting the announcement from downstairs, and here's some of the scuffle. This is after Darrell on the left there. Darrell, uh oh. That's Risley who took it, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Well, now we know the punches usually mean you're gone. And I'm not talking just tonight. I, I, in Homer Bush. Darrell is leaving. Homer Bush is leaving. Gene Monahan? No. Maybe somebody got scraped up. Darrell did look at his hand. I saw him look at his hand, the one, the left hand where he threw the punch. And I think you could see why Risley's upset. Maybe Risley mouthed off, said right something in the middle of the pack, and yep. he took one from Darrell. Now, Shannon Stewart was down at first base, dangling his left arm. I'm sure that stung on that pitch from Arabu that hit him by the elbow. So things have simmered, exploded, and gone back down. Well, this one's not over. We're only in the fifth inning. Still awaiting the announcement, although we saw Bush and Strawberry leave. No, you throw a punch, you got to go. No, but I, yeah, but I, when I said got, when I said threw a punch, I meant for more than tonight. Oh, okay. you know, when, yeah, when that's they, true. When they look at those punches. They they sort of look at them like the NBA does. And suspension is usually a word that follows. Ball one. The hitter is Sean Green. Not a bad idea to call a pitch out there. You know that uh, Shannon Stewart's kind of ticked off. He's among the league leaders in steals. One way to get back at the next at the club is to take off and try and steal a bag. Remember, this is still a 3-3 game. The game is still on the line. The announcement did come across here in the press box that Don Zimmer was ejected for arguing with Mike Riley. Obviously, I, and I'm going to say obviously, I don't want to put words in Don's mouth, but that it should have been prevented with the warning to Roger Clemens last inning. Swing and a miss by Green, one and one. So what we know, or what we think we know, Kenny, here we go. Strawberry and Bush, and only one member of the Blue Jays. It's unbelievable. Now that's why you expand the roster. It's a good thing it's September. How do you look at that proceeding and and I, un unbalance the ejections? I did not see what Homer Bush did. I didn't see him in the pile there. I saw Darrell throw a punch. I saw Risley try and get back at him. That's why those guys are out of the game. But I didn't see Homer. Sean Green struck out by Hideki Arabu. He could make quite a statement for his team here in this inning. That's the third time that Sean Green has gone out on strikes. All three of them swinging. Seventh strikeout in the ball game for Hideki Arabu. So the incident costs the Yankees if you go back and include the Clemens pitch. Joe Torrey, Don Zimmer, Darryl Strawberry, Homer Bush. It costs the Blue Jays, Tim Johnson and Bill Risley. You hear Jim Cott say that uh, Hideki would make some friends on the ball club. 
He's got some new Kimosabes. <laughs> the fans obviously recognize it as well. It's just one of those weird subtleties of baseball. We're in a wild top of the fifth, all tied at three. Now, if by some chance you were channel surfing, and people have been known to do that from time to time. And as you came across MSG, the, the brawl, or almost brawl, got your attention. It goes back to what happened last inning when Roger Clemens, runner going, throw by Girardi, he is a little bit late. Stewart steals the base. He had a feeling he was going sometime. That's his 47th stolen base of the year. The Yankees' Ricky Lede launched a long fly ball to the wall. And then Clemens hit Brocious on the very next pitch between the numbers in the back. And Stewart's in there easily. You know, I know Hideki drilled Stewart leading off the inning, and he's gained some friends, but I, on the ball club and respect from the rest of his teammates. But even with Clemens hitting Brocious last inning, Brocious got the second base. In a tie ball game, I recall years ago. Hall of Famer Jim Palmer saying to me the guy you hit might be the guy that scores and beats you. I mentioned that yeah. at the time I thought yeah. how ironic that would be. And that's why uh, Jim didn't hit many people. Plus I don't think he wanted anybody coming out to the mound. Arabu is being very careful with Jose Canseco who has been hitting the ball a ton lately had a three run home run in the game last night here at the stadium. Not the worst thing in the world if you walk Canseco it sets up a force at every base. But on three and oh he goes right down Main Street. With that swing, Jose was trying to bypass Queens and go directly to Brooklyn. <laughs> Without taking the vegan. Yeah. <laughs> and Seiko launches one to center field. I mean, it's one of his moon shots, but it's well short of the wall. Stewart's going to try to advance and will get in easily. The Blue Jays have a potential go ahead run at third with two away. You know, Kenny, I go back to what the intent of the rule was. You know, if you hit a guy after a home run, the intent was to prevent pitchers from doing what Roger Clemens did. Now, Ricky Lede hit a ball that was right at the wall. The Yankees had the three run inning. I mean, it. You don't have to be in baseball for a lifetime to know exactly what was happening. How could the umpires not be in tune to that? It's totally in the spirit of the law that they enacted to warn Roger Clemens. And what does warning Roger Clemens really mean? I mean, does it, it's, what does it do? It doesn't mar the game. You know, the, the fact that they hit Brocious. There was no place for Brocious to go. That that ball was designed to hit him. If you understand what I mean, it wasn't as if he grazed him or hit him in the front of the uniform. The only way, only place he could turn was turn around and take it in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you can bet that Scott Brocious's upper back is going to have a knot that's black and blue when this game is over. Although he looks fine right now. You can bet he was one of the first guys out of the dugout, though. Robo may not have wanted to throw anything big time to Conseco. And now he's dealing with Carlos Delgado, who has a home run in the ball game. And he's gone 3 0 on him. Now on Conseco, he went fastball right over the plate. Same thing, and Delgado hits it high above Brocious across the foul line. In it with glove. And so, Hideki Arabu puts a zero on the board and. Makes a statement to the Blue Jays, Shannon Stewart, and his teammates. Clemens back to the mound. We're all tied wildly at three.
maids and, uh... Hey! Call your mom? Call her. We had dinner. I'll have a ham sandwich. And two scratchers. Ham sandwich. Work through lunch? Oh, yeah, you know me. Work, work, work. Scratch, scratch, scratch. <laughs> uh, two o'clock should be finished. Mm-hmm. You bet. <laughs> Twenty bucks. Oh, no, no. I just won. Hey, you want to go to lunch? Lunch is on me, Walter. Scratchers. It's not whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. Hey there, this is your colonel talking. Now I got something here that's downright fun. My new popcorn chicken. Crunchy morsels of tender white meat. It's mouth popping good. Woo, look at them go. Hurry down to KFC, try my new popcorn chicken for $1.99. It's more fun than watching me, unless of course colonel get funky. Go colonel, go colonel. At KFC we do chicken right, and not just in a bucket neither. Dimage, the first digital camera with a move and zoom lens. A three-foot cable shoots over the crowd's head, behind your back. Shoot up a storm and download only the best into your PC. Yes, Dimage V, the digital camera with a fast break detachable lens, only from the mind of the Nolte. It's amazing how these things work out. We just happened to find four people wearing Yes t-shirts in the crowd here at Yankee Stadium, which is a perfect segue for a show that'll debut on Monday here on MSG. Yes, Marv is back. It'll be great to have him Monday. It's the debut and premiere of the National Finance Sports Desk. It'll be following Yankees baseball. They're calling it 11 o'clock here on MSG. Congratulations to Marvin Heather. They got married this past week. And have you heard about this set, Ken? No. It's like a, uh, it's not quite virtual reality, but it's, it's sort of like that. In other words, it's designed so that they can put Marv anywhere they want, but he stays at the garden. So like if they want to host sports desk from like Budapest wow. they, they can make it look like Marv is in Budapest if they want to put Marv like on the ice in Vancouver they can do that. It's like out of Star Trek if they want to put Marv yeah. at the deli they can do that. <laughs> so Marv is back Monday on MSG at 11 o'clock on the National Finance MSG sports desk. Here's Clemens against Cheater and we're talking some history here folks. Right now we're going through our video archives to uncover the history that exists between the Blue Jays and Yankees. Here it is. Let's go back to July 17th. Is it Sky Dome and Derek Jeter after singling and doubling in the fifth inning is hit by Roger Clemens and this pitch is inside. Derek checks his swing gets a piece of it and the count goes to two and oh. Actually it's one and one. This pitch hits his bat I believe. Yep he tried to check his swing and it hits the bat. One ball and one strike. And that's a that's the uh, the chutzpah of Clemens. He's still going to come inside. Well, because, you know that's his that's his prerogative. Well, later on in that ball game on the 17th, something. Uh, Tony Phillips was hit in the eighth inning of that game of the Blue Jays, leading off that night. In the eighth inning, he was hit. Hey, come on, get on hit by a pitch by Mike Buddy. I remember that in the ninth inning. Tim Raines was hit by Paul Quantrill. I remember that. So, you know, there's a little bit of a history between these two clubs here. We think it may even go back to spring training, and we're rewinding the tapes all the way back to Tampa. Hopefully, we'll get there. Tied at three. We're in the fifth. It's a 3 1 count to Derek Jeter leading off the bottom of the fifth. And if you remember that night when uh, Tony Phillips got hit, kind of set him off. Jeter, ground ball, deep plated second and throwing over to Carlos Delgado is the second baseman Craig Grayback. So Jeter has gone one away. Steve Sinclair is warming up in the Toronto Blue Jays bullpen. I remember last inning we thought maybe the hand of Roger Clemens was giving him a problem. And now we've got the trainer coming out and whoever Tim Johnson appointed to run the team. That is uh, Mel Queen, the pitching coach, and longtime trainer Tommy Craig coming out to check on the Rocket. And uh, he is tough to get out of the ballgame. He's very stern with what he's saying, and he's doing all the talking. It was, it was, like, it was like he said, get off of my mound, I'm staying in the game. Chuck Knobloch was in the batter's box in the third inning when this happened. 
Clemens with that just annoying natural reaction to put your hand up to make a play. Finished the inning easily. But the next inning was when the Yankees got the three runs. Now you got to wonder if there's any swelling in that area. And uh, you know, check it between innings to see if he has ice bags on that uh, hand and wrist area. The hitter is Paul O'Neill. Clemens loses ball one. Well, this episode here tonight certainly makes watching Saturday and Sunday a little bit more intriguing. Sometimes when you say that, nothing happens. Down the line and left. And just foul. Shannon Stewart made a play for it. Imagine bringing somebody to a ball game like tonight in their first major league game, a first baseball game, trying to explain to them what's going on. Oh, the unwritten rules yeah, and the well, things, what, what, the objects why, of protocol. And why is all this happening? Yeah. That'd be difficult, wouldn't it? I'd let you do it. No. <laughs> Two and one to Paul O'Neill. Well, Jim Cott uh, pointed out that uh, prior to being hit, uh, those two shots through the middle, Clement's control was a lot better than it is now. Yeah, he's lost a lot of fastballs, very high and outside. Hitter's pitch, and it's a fastball, two and one. Swing stays alive. Paul O'Neill with back to back games of two home runs. Batting leaders brought to you by the New York Presbyterian Hospital, the area's new leader in health care. Those are the Yankees who have accomplished that feat. Mickey Mantle did it twice. Moose Gowan did it a pair of times. Babe Ruth back in 1921. Six three on your scorecard. O'Neill is retired. Two away. Now, one thing that would tell you that Clemens is not what he was earlier in the ball game. He hasn't had a strikeout since the third inning, and a lot of balls have been hit hard since then. And O'Neill is furious with himself. He could care less what he did last night. Now it's Bernie Williams who has struck out and singled back in the fourth. He scored one of the Yankee runs. Foul ball off himself. So there'll be a lot of videotape reviewed, won't there? Well, we're getting down to the point of the season, and especially for the Blue Jays, if anybody gets suspended, I mean, these guys are trying for the wild card. The Yankees, it might not affect quite as much. Somebody has to leave for three days. Because they've got the division clinched. They will be in the playoffs. The Blue Jays are fighting for it. So once they go over the video, and if anybody else is deemed to uh, incited or kept things going, they might be facing a suspension as well. well the thing about it is that you put any two American League teams in a ballpark and there will be many friendships that go between clubhouses on both teams. And yet at that moment they're all off. Joe Torre said when commenting on the uh, the Cubs saluting Mark McGuire he said I don't think it was a bad thing he said I just remember when I played it was always war. Well I don't he's right in a way because I don't think you see many people hugging the guy who just hit a home run. Right. Yeah. I know it was in the spirit of 62 home runs and they felt that they've just seen history and McGuire's a great guy don't get me wrong but how does Steve Traxel feel on the mound when he sees uh, his catcher hug him. Well we had a, a definite battle here tonight. <laughs> 